there's a song that me and Cheyenne's been working on, and it's not, it's very raw, so don't y'all dare laugh at us or anything, but uh, it's the song that has been just on my heart here lately. Um, I've been going through some things, and my mom has sent me this song a couple of weeks ago, and it just spoke to me, and it spoke to me so loudly that I have to sing it. Um, the song is called Stones, and it talks about how if we, if we are not praising Him, then the stones will cry out. And I refuse to allow the stones to cry out. I was created to worship Him. I was created to, to sing His praises every day, all day long. And that's what we're going to be doing in heaven. But we need to be doing that here on earth too. And sometimes we get in those mully grubs and we get in those pro spots where we're, we always focus on the problem and not the problem solver. Yeah. And I, today I just want y'all to really think about praising Him so that the stones don't have to cry out to Mom. Him.
beautiful words to that yes. song. Amen. Won't let the work stones cry out. And all that we do, we don't even let the stones cry. Let our praises and worship be overcoming. Turn with me, if you will, to Matthew 11. And while you're turning, have you ever felt like you just want to give up? Times have gotten so hard and so beaten down on you that you just feel like giving up is the best option. Mm -hmm. That giving up is the only option in our minds that we have. But can I tell somebody here tonight, there's hope. Yes. Amen. The title of this message is The Cross Has the Final Word. Matthew 11 and 28. And the words of Jesus says, Come unto me all, ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Pray with me. Lord, we thank you, my God. We thank you for the anointing presence of your Holy Ghost we feel in this house. We thank you, my God, for, for not letting the stones, for pushing us, my God, for not letting the stones to cry out and for knowing our names. But God, we thank you for all the, 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 the conditions, Lord, we can go through with you. We thank you for the ability, Lord, to lay our burdens down at your feet and to lay us down to your cross and learn of you. And Lord, as we pray over this message and we pray over this time, my God, we ask that you would just bless it, bless these lips, anoint these lips, Lord, to speak your words and have you behind your cross. And in Jesus' mighty name, I do pray. Amen. The cross has the final word. Now from the scriptures I read, it says, Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. <clears throat> that word laden there means spiritual anxiety. Or we can put this in simple terms, spiritually anxious at times for things to go crazy, the things to go, go totally berserk. When he says, if you're heavy with this, if you're heavily spiritually anxious, I, Jesus, will give you rest. And that's all he wants, us, he wants to do is to give us rest in those times. And this is, I didn't realize this was going to be part of my message, but it's just how I had put up, keep calm and pray on. I print that out Tuesday during my lunch time, and then Tuesday night, this message hit me like, Tears rolling down my face. So hard and heavy. But we're going to use what God gives us. Amen. And if you ever felt like you just can't, can't catch a break at times. Maybe your finances are in the toilet and you don't know when the next paycheck is going to come or, or even if the next bills will be paid on time. Maybe it is you, your health is going down or, or you're, you just got out of one problem and got put back into another problem. Maybe you just got so bombarded with the storms of life, your, your kids are getting each other's throats all the time, your, your, your mind is so far out there on many different things that you're, 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 you're so much going on. Your world seems chaotic. But can I say, Jesus wants to give you rest. Yes, amen. And here we find our rest. <coughs> but we ask ourselves most of the time, how do we, how 
Can Jesus give us rest? By taking it to the cross. Taking whatever lays you, or whatever is burdening you so hard and so, so bad, and whatever gets you such a downward slope all the time, take it to the cross. Take it to someone. To Jesus. But sir, you don't know what I've been through. Let's take a journey here tonight. Let's take a very strong spiritual journey. For as I said, the cross has the final word in it. The cross says you're strong enough to keep going. The cross that our Savior was nailed to says you can keep going. The blood on it says you can keep going. The nail scarred hands of Him says you can keep going. The Paris side says you can keep going. He says you're strong enough. How do we know this? In John 19, we find our answer. We all know the story of how he was crucified. How he was going through the trials of the, the mockery and all this other. We all know this story so well because we hear it at Easter. We hear it all throughout the year, it seems. But here, I want this to glean, or us to glean from this tonight. Here's Jesus. He has done no wrong. And all of this entire time on this earth, He has done no wrong. Because Pilate said, I find no fault in this man. I find no reason to crucify him. And you keep yelling crucify. And I find no reason to do so. But the crowd keeps pushing Pilate to do what they want him to do. Which is crucify a sinless person. Jesus right there could have snapped his finger and the angels would have fell down and killed every one of them. But he knew, he knew that the year 2020 was around the corner. That, that all this chaos of all this coronavirus and all this, this division in the nation needed this. Needed what he was going to do. They needed to hear that you're strong enough to keep going. That you're strong enough. And as they stripped him naked, as they placed a crown of thorns on his head, This wasn't no ordinary crown of what we would call thorns of, of Louisiana thorn bushes. These are long thorns that would make sure to pierce his brow. They, they made sure that blood ran down his face and that he was in pain so badly. They plucked his beard. They grabbed handfuls of his beard and yanked it out of his face. They slapped, spit on him, mocked him, and did everything that they could do. <clears throat> Whenever they got through with that, they scourged his back. They left it down to the bones. 
they got all the meat and hide off. They tore his back to our point of I cannot do this anymore. I could probably take the slappings, the, the beard being plucked. I probably could take the, the crown of thorn we put on my head. I probably could take all these things, the mockery. But the whipping across my back, where bones was exposed. I, we probably think of these things that I could take all that, but that, that would be my, my feather on a camel's back. That would break me right there. I would say, no more of this. Yeah. I'm done with this. I, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take this beat no more. I'm not. I, I'm not gonna do all this no more. But there's hope. There's still hope because he never stopped praying. He never. He never got his mind off of the year 2020 on this November night that somebody needed some more strength. That somebody needed to hear a message. That somebody needed to have be told that you're strong enough to go on one more step. That you're strong enough to, to keep the door open in the morning and say, I'm coming out. I'm going to put my feet on the floor and I'm going to step up and go. I don't care what, what, what comes at me. I'm strong enough because the cross says, I'm strong. Because Jesus says I'm strong. And it's not over until the cross says it's over. Until God himself says it's through. In the book of Judges, bear with me for a moment. But in the book of Judges, chapter number 6, you're going to find a man who thought that he wasn't strong enough. You're going to find a man right there who, who's, who did all he could, thought he could do. And you'll find him on the back of a wine press. Hiding from the enemy. Mm -hmm. But in Judges 6, verse number 12, is where we hear this. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee. That there is a powerful sentence right there. The Lord is with thee. Yes. For the Lord said, I will never forsake you nor leave you. Yes. The Lord said, Where I send you, I've done went. And he says, and it continues on, it says, Thou mighty man of valor. Mm -hmm. The man there just is plural is versatile. Valor means strength. Mighty men, and I'll say it like this, men and women of strength. That means that you have enough strength to keep going. And Gideon is who I'm talking about. Gideon was an army raised man. He knew all of it. He, he knew that he could defeat anybody. But you find him behind a wine press, scared half out of his mind. Because he done forgot something. He done forgot that he was strong enough. That he done forgot that, that the Lord is with him wherever he goes. Amen. Because he sought God. He, he clinged to God. He, he yearned to hear God's voice. He yearned to be with God. And he loved God. And here, we see he is called a mighty man. Of valor. Now sometimes we have life punches us. It hits us right square in the jawbone. And we don't feel very mighty. Do I have any honest folk in the house? Yes, amen. That's true. We don't feel very mighty. We don't feel like that we can go on. We, that, that's where we, we're wrong right there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell a story that I have said before that some of y'all have heard and some of y'all haven't. But it's it was laid in my heart today as I was just mulling this over and just 
seeking God in His direction. But this story hits so home and so dear to my heart all the time. Keeps me going. We were young. And we were driving around one night and we had an accident with our car. The motor locked up. Our only source of transportation. We didn't have nothing else. That was it right there. Was it my fault? Absolutely it was. Could I redo it and do it better? Absolutely I could. But it was for a lesson just for this night. Because I believe everything we go through, every life of every life's mess that we make or we don't make, or we get involved in, is for a reason. Yeah. And it's never not for a reason. Amen. Most of the time, it's to show us how strong we are. That's true. Come on. Most of the time, it's to show us, hey, look what you just went out of. Yeah. Look, look, look. Your car blew up. You had no money to go out and buy a new one. You had no money to even go put, put a spare tire on it. Mm -hmm. And here I was. I thought I, it was over with. Because our finances were on the rocks. Our marriage was on the, the deep end of the rocks. Yeah. Our, our whole family, it seemed like it was just in shambles. And here we are. Here I am. This is, this is it right here. This is what is going to break the camel's back right here. This is my end. And then, here comes a truck down the road. As I'm sitting beside a ditch filled with water, I'm sitting pretty much in the water. I'm at my lowest point, I, I feel at that time. I'm at my lowest point, my lowest drawdown. My lowest. And here comes a truck down the road, pulls right in my driveway. She, it's my mother-in-law. She don't go in the house to visit with Angel and say, what's he doing out there? She'll go in there to gossip about me and they don't go and have a big party over all that and, and uh, oh, he was having a pity party out there. Let's go ahead and scold him down some more. She don't do all that. What she does is she goes right into my pity party and burns it. She goes right over there and just does this. Puts her hand on my back. I melt like the snow in a hot summer day. Mm. I melt and I bawl and I weep. And she said, don't let this kick you in the teeth, son. Yeah. Get up. The most famous word I can hear right now at the time is get up. Now, I believe that was the Lord right there because I want to run 20 miles down the road when I see him pulling the driveway. Because I knew that there was something about to happen. That there was something going to be said. That something going to be done. Right in that moment that was going to, to crash my pity party. Mm. Arise. Get up. However you want to say it. She was telling me, son, you're strong enough. There's people that have been through harder problems than this small drop in a bucket. That you're strong enough to get up. That you're strong enough to raise up. Don't let this keep you down. Don't let this kick you in the teeth. So I didn't. I didn't let it kick me in the teeth after that point. I said, well, this party is closed. Hey, turn the lights off. Y'all just going home, y'all. Y'all little pity party demons. Come on. Y'all go on home because it ain't no, ain't no sense in just staying right here. And 
see, why, why would Nina stay or hang around because the wine is still out? Y'all just gonna put the wine back up. <laughs> Pour it out down the drain. That's why I always might have pity parties because, hey, free food. Free food and free cold drinks for everybody. And someone to give an ear to listen to it. Mm. That makes you feel justified in the way that you're doing. It makes you feel, oh, see, right, right here, this Gideon, bear with me, this Gideon didn't want to hear, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. He wanted to hear something else. Mm -hmm. He wanted to hear I know it's hard, and yet it is all around you. Look, look at them. They're, they're stronger than you. Come on. Look at that problem of, of, of cancer. Look at that problem of your finances in the toilet. It's stronger than you. Mm, come on. He wanted to hear all that. He wanted to hear your car blew up. That's stronger than you. You're going to starve to death. That's stronger than you. He didn't want to hear you have strength in the Lord because He is with you always. Now back to Matthew 19 or John 19. This is how Gideon was strong. Because after he was whipped and torn of the flesh he wasn't, the Roman soldiers didn't care. Roman soldiers didn't sit there and say, oh, that's good enough. We'll, we'll carry him the rest of the way to the, uh, where we're going to kill him at. No. They placed this big, heavy cross. And I don't care how big or how strong you think you are. Once your back's laid wide open, you can't pick nothing up. They laid this big, heavy cross upon his back. And they made him, they whipped him even more to make him carry that thing from where they trialed him and scourged him all the way up to Golgotha. They made him carry this thing. Did he fall? Absolutely he did. Because it was so much. You've just been beat. You've just been knocked out. You've just been, as you would, some people say, took down a pig. And told to carry a cross. A cross. To a hill. Mm -hmm. Up a hill. This thing's rubbing on your back. This thing is steadily reminding you, huh, you ain't strong enough. Hold on a minute. There's more help coming. That's what the other person was, that's what Jesus was saying. Hold on a minute, help is going to come. Yes. Help is going to be there. He was basically telling himself, don't give up. Don't give up this fight. Don't give up this because the year 2020 is around the corner. I know I'm saying that, but you just bear with me on that. Bear. And he was sitting there. Being nailed to this cross. Then he rose up. They rose him up on this cross. And the only way he could breathe is by taking his self with his feet nailed together. Arms stretched out. Nails pierced him. And pick himself up for a breath. Tell me that ain't strong. Jesus. He breathed. He, that's how he was able to breathe. And tell those other two sinners that were nailed to the cross. So to one of them he will be forgiven. And to the other he prayed for. And then when it was all said and done and he hung on that cross and he 
said the two most, three most strongest words. It is finished. It is finished, he said, and gave up the ghost. Or he died. Basically what he was saying is that it's complete. They are now strong enough to go through whatever life throws at him. To go through the beatings, the whippings of life. To go through the, the agonizing pain that this life wants to throw at us. The headaches, the, 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 the turmoil, the, the tribulations, the things that wants us to kill us. The things that were meant to kill us. We are now strong enough to go through. Because you would not go through these things if Jesus didn't go through them first. Mm -hmm. You would not walk a day in a fire if Jesus didn't first go through that fire with you. Yeah. Or before you. To show you. Not to show you that there's a way out right here around this corner, but to show you that you're strong enough to walk through that fire. Come on, yeah. To walk through and make it through the other side. Because he's now on the other side coming, come on, I can help you. Come on, grab my hand. Yes. Remember, give me, give me, I'll give you rest right here. Yes. At the end. And then they laid him down off of that cross in a tomb where no man had laid before. They rolled a stone in front of the tomb saying this will keep him in. Mm -hmm. The devil sitting there laughing the whole time. Hey, I got him now. Now everybody's going to say he died. I'm weak. Everybody's going to say it now. Mm -hmm. I got him. The devil's got a little cock in his step now. Yeah, I got him. Sure do. He's in the grave, everybody. He's dead. He wasn't that strong, now was he? But on the third day, I say on the third day, Jesus said, I'm going to show you how weak I am. He kicked that door, that tomb wide open. He said, here I am. I'm alive. Now watch this. Yeah. Now watch this. And he even tells the devil, I have your keys. Yes, sir. I have your keys to hell and the grave. Yes. And there is nothing, there is nothing that you have anymore. Yes. You don't even have the peace of your own mind. Yes, yes. Amen. So whatever problems we go through, just remember that the devil don't even have the keys to his own kingdom. His own kingdom. Mm -hmm. God has it. Yes. So he don't have nothing. Yep. And Jesus busted out of that grave as we can. We can still bust out of our graves. Yes. The same grave we find ourselves in. The same thing because Jesus lives inside of us now. Yes. We can bust out of that grave, walk out proud, and say, yeah, I may have failed. Yeah, I may have thought I was weak and I wasn't wow. strong enough. Yeah, I may have sat there and said, you know what, this is the end, I'm through. I'm done, I'm over with. We, we may have said all these things in our own wisdom, but we didn't dare ask God for His wisdom because it's going to crash our pity party. Wow. I mean to tell you, we now can bust out of that grave. And walk proud and, and proud to be called a child of God. Amen, yes. Proud to be called forgiven. Yes. Proud to be the heirs of the kingdom. And proud to be called Jesus' brother. Amen. Because we're his closest friend. That's but the devil ain't got this in no bag. 
he ain't the, the chaos and the, the world says the world says, hey, I got your life by a thread. Mm -hmm. The cross ain't said it's finished yet. That's right. yes, the cross you. says that you're not finished yet. The cross says that you're strong enough to keep on trucking along. Yes. The cross says, you know what? You may have a hard life right now, but turn to your brother beside you who is, is, is starving, slept to death. He ain't going to tell you this. He's too proud to tell you, hey, I'm hungry. I need some, some food, some meat. There's always somebody else in a worse condition than we are in. And we're blessed more than we should be. Yes, amen. Because we have clothes on our back. We have vehicles to drive, homes to go into, a hot, warm meal in our bellies, yeah. and a nice, cool, air-conditioned bedroom yeah. to lay down in. Yeah. <clears throat> some people in some third-world countries have dirt. That's it. They have some shade and some palm trees, and that's all they have. But they are thankful to have that. Mm -hmm. That they, they, they are they're so thankful to have that. They're so thankful to walk thousands of miles to hear one word in the Holy Ghost. Come on. And walk thousands of miles back. Mm -hmm. Bare feet across the hot desert. Yeah. Mm. I can't do that. Because I have shoes on my feet and I like my shoes. Going across a hot black top road. I know how hot concrete gets. It burns the soles of my feet slap up. But Jesus says I'm strong enough. He says I'm strong enough to keep on going. Even though my back stripped wide open by this world, even though all these things, he, he calls me a mighty man of valor. Mm -hmm. He calls me strong enough. He calls me to walk out of the fiery furnace that's been heated ten times more than it should be, that burned the two guards in the front of it. He calls me strong enough to go in that thing and say, hey, hey yeah. here is the Son of God. Yes. Then the oak door looked like that. And there's four of them in there. Hold on a minute. We threw three of them in there. Don't give up. Whatever you do from this point on, because these words are going to ring in your ear, these words are going to nag you half to death. At night, you lay in bed saying, I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to quit it all. They don't love me at the church, they don't love me in that work, uh, in my family. They don't love me. I'm not needed and I'm not important enough to be a part of that family. To be a part of that church. You are. You're needed. You're loved. Because Jesus loved you that much to put himself on the cross. For your strength. For your strength. As Brother John comes, we stand on our feet.